seriously, the, the preface of this is manager expectations. Well, you say that, but you know, whilst I was cooking my sausages, I did prepare a short statement. Uh, when I got the call from Tim Sway, Phil Pinsky and Bill Lutz that they were getting the old band back together, I was very excited. It has been an ambition of mine to be a podcast, to be a, a guest on the prestigious Reclaimed Audio podcast for many years. <laughs> um, a podcast we thought had vanished, vanished from the airwaves. But uh, to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is not that podcast. This is number one, questionable misunderstandings with Glenn, <laughs> KJ, Harold... Uh, <laughs> this week featuring the highly talented sarah from uplish furnishings and me phil from phil makes things uh this is a podcast episode you are welcome to it sarah your turn no, obviously, thank you very much, guys, for uh, for inviting us along. Uh, I don't think the pair of us have the faintest idea what to expect, or but I think we've already established that there is no plan or no roadmap There's for this whatsoever. Absolutely no plan whatsoever. The plan is there is no plan. So who have we got on this week? We've got Sarah and we've got Phil. What do you both do in your making lives? Well, Phil, go on over to you. Uh, in the making life, yeah, uh, sawdust and mess generally, um, <laughs> and I make a few things across a year. <laughs> <laughs> and you put some of those things on YouTube as well. I do occasionally put things on YouTube and uh, the Instagram. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, these people who manage to crank out you know, a project a week—I don't know how they do it. Um, <laughs> I think last year I did four. Four projects, four videos. <laughs> yeah, that's. Intimate. So I think you say Phil operates seasonally. That's 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 a. Well, you know, there is definitely there are definitely seasons of work. Yes, because yeah. you know, the the workshop in the winter is not a pleasant place to be. It's very <laughs> cold, and all the glue freezes over, and the finishes dry out, and then spring comes around, and you think, fantastic, I've got lots of ideas, and. None of my glue works and all my finishes have <laughs> evaporated. <laughs> and now I'm going to have to go and buy a load of stuff. I don't know why we're all laughing. We all know exactly what you're <laughs> Yeah. But you go down it. there and you can manage about sort of 10 or 15 minutes before you yeah, sod this. I'm going inside. <laughs> but to answer your question, though, I, I don't do a project a week, but I found really lowering your standards really boost your efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can lower my standards any further than they already are. I was going to say, there's a, there, there are baselines and then there's working subterraneanly. It's, yeah. It does get, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, I think we all struggle with our time management. I mean, I'm saying that in the desperate hope that I'm amongst, <laughs> amongst friends here. Definitely, um, definitely. But, you know, I, I generally find that... Um, the time that I spend doing all of my uplifts and repurposing, uh, I ex explore other ways of just making things even harder than they could possibly ever be. Um, I'm a master of finding a hard way to do anything um, because I never seem to learn from <laughs> from my mistakes. I'm a master of the prototype, which then just becomes the regular um, the ah. regular method. Yay. Oh, yeah. so the the diff, the bag with the different size handles on it is a is the I regular guarantee method. Now. I will do that three, <laughs> four, or five times. It's, it's just, yeah, it's it's hard being me. I think one of the, one of the comments on that Instagram post was it's <laughs> <laughs> one's one's for just holding it in the hand and the other one's for the off the shoulder look, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I just I just wish my marketing skills was were that good that i could carry that off absolutely but, um, it's it's not a bug it's a feature, it's a feature. <laughs> yeah <clears throat> no alas it's just my inability to be able to retain any information and uh, recall the very large bank of mistakes that i've made constantly i remember the mistakes i just don't necessarily know which context they were in and so therefore i just walk straight into them again and again and again well, see your Never earlier mind. comment about being over 40 i yes there's definitely things i just i just can't remember anything anymore 
my my memory is terrible. <laughs> That's why they invented the pen and paint paper. Yeah, I've got lots of those, but then you've got to remember to look at it. Oh, I too have loads ah, yeah. of those. Yeah, I've got so many different methods of um, committing ideas or suggestions to paper. I think we we mentioned this in one of the the previous podcasts. Um, about using Siri and all of these methods of like data or idea collection because you know the brain just the certainly the memory part of the brain just cannot be trusted it's completely ridiculous um but then I will regularly find lists and then other lists that I forgot I had and all of these lists will all feature almost identical items that I've forgotten <laughs> that every single one exists great yeah. Item was, number five on this list, make a list of things to do. There we go. <laughs> but I was kind of scared about this not remembering things uh, because, all right, is this early onset Alzheimer's? Um, do I have some issues struggling remembering faces and then connecting those with names is a no-go. And then, um, as Phil said, uh, you turn 40. And, of course, someone asked me, yeah, but you get two kids. You don't sleep. Oh, that's right. So those are connected. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'm ex- I'm expecting my memory to pick up somewhat in like twelve to thirteen years. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you let us know how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By that time, you realise that you just realise. Yeah, it's just because you just don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking forward to remembering things, but now I've realised there's just no point. <laughs> there's no point. It's a waste of effort and energy. What's the point in remembering things? Yeah. It'll come back to haunt you. <laughs> I mean, it's like well, having a, a like your Explorer window up. I have like I have seventy tabs open. I don't know which one of them is playing the music, and fourteen of them are frozen, and I don't remember what's the last one I opened. So I just open a new one, and then that's also how I manage my project. <laughs> yeah, it's revisiting things. I, I I've spent far too long today battling through trying to set up a TikTok shop. Um, I currently only have my website and I'll have links on my Instagram page. So I'm just trying to sort of you know, expand my platforms. And I did the first phase of this back in March or April, I think. And at the time, the likelihood is I just got bored or just completely saturated with the process <laughs> and said, oh, I'll pick it up again later. But uh, you'd think I know myself better than that now. So, of course, now when I've tried to pick it up, I'm now battling with all of the TikTok nightmares of, oh, there's been so much inactivity in your account. Please redo this. Redo that. Can I remember what I logged in with? Did I log in with one <laughs> one account or have I changed my user settings to, oh, I, don't, I, just, I just do not have the mental bandwidth to deal with all that kind of stuff anymore. And if, and if you wait too long, they have changed the interface as well. So when you log on to continue, it's like, no. This wasn't where I left off. <laughs> yeah. I'd save so much time in my week if I could just, first of all, just remember passwords and then have a system of remembering passwords that actually worked. Wow. Isn't there a thing on your computer that says, would you like me to remember this password? Uh, well, then I toggle between, do I save <laughs> things on my Google accounts? And then I seem to somehow have two different Google accounts. <laughs> which one is which? I have things saved to a Google account, which I have no idea how to access. That's good fun, that one. <laughs> oh, I know. My, my Google account is somehow attached to some random project, which uh, me and a, another bunch of makers started. Oh, it must have been five years ago now. And none of us can remember who actually owns it. There we go. So <laughs> we're all attached to this this group, and it's all yeah. Everybody's got it in their Gmail and in their YouTube, and nobody knows who the owner is, and we can't get rid of it. It just exists. <laughs> <laughs> I did see an advert the other day for something you can buy on Amazon, which is a username and passwords book, which is very very secure. Write <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it all down in plain text. Just put it somewhere safe. It'll be fine. <laughs> but what if you, I mean, you can obviously log into it and then you just, you you buy a, a movie or something off of Google Play and then you just 
the cancel cancel that credit <clears throat> card and of course then they will contact the one who is actually connected owning to the account because <laughs> if you're missing one payment they will find you i mean if you're on the moon on, yeah I'm sure. yeah i just i just think it's funny that nobody can remember who actually set it up i mean <laughs> It, it's fine. It can just live there and just exist until the end of time. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much of the internet is like that. Just oh someone God. created something and forgotten about it, and it, and it just lives on. Long abandoned projects just yeah. sitting there. <laughs> well, my TikTok account, by all accounts. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I I tried to set up a I tried to set up a shop on Instagram, which means having to connect your Facebook, which means I had to and I had to reactivate my facebook account because i cancelled that about a year ago just turned it off was bored of it yeah. and could i get these two things to talk to each other oh gosh no it's painful, after, isn't it? after about a day of trying i just said Do you know what i'm just gonna put stuff on ebay it's easier <laughs> yeah. yeah i've got three facebook accounts none of them talk to each other and i can't figure that out either so no. yeah and it's facebook so nobody cares anymore do they no <laughs> facebook's dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just wonder if it's a making a decision, just drawing a line in the sand, just saying, right, I am not able to carry on with these things as they are evolving, or I just should be left unsupervised in such matters. <laughs> <laughs> Get someone else to do it. No. No. All yeah. the, those all these things are a bit of a mystery. TikTok, no idea, never used it. I did um you know, Jimmy Duresta started putting things on Snapchat some years ago <laughs> and I thought, oh, okay, you know, this was before Instagram had reels and stuff like that. So, you know, short form videos that weren't on YouTube. Yeah. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll get that. And I had to ask a young person in the office, how the hell yeah. you use Snapchat. <laughs> and she tried to explain it to me. And I just said, do you know what? I'm not going to bother. <laughs> I think we've had a discussion on a previous <laughs> podcast before that Snapchat's for young children and her bard's mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had like the 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 last couple of weeks. I, I realized. I mean, it it resurfaces every once in a while where people discuss. All right, if I win the lottery or if I win this, I win this. I'm gonna buy this and that. And and this one guy said, "No, I'm just gonna get an assistant." And I like, <laughs> yes, I'm gonna get one of those uh, social media managers, <laughs> or something uh, which also knows how to operate uh, a calendar and. Uh, <laughs> which will then subsequently be the embodiment of my uh, uh, recollection or memory. So I'm just going to do whatever I do now. I'm not going to buy very much thing, but I'm going to have an assistant just making all those things work in the background so I don't have to think about them. <laughs> just tell me where, what I'm doing and where I'm going today. <laughs> yeah. I, I need you to make this for a reel. All right, all right. Stand there, smile. All right, like hold the hammer and then... They edit it together and post it for you, and you can just <laughs> stumble around, do whatever you like. Sounds good. Sounds I mean, to be honest, having an assistant in any part of your life would be mega, wouldn't it? Yeah. If there's yeah. someone you could trust, because I mean, uh, I mean, in a way, in a sense that to do the job well enough. Because I, I mean, I have trust issues generally. I mean, I'm <laughs> I don't just talking think that laundry they... and stuff like that yeah. here. But if you're particular about how you wash your small K- and stuff, no. you're... KJ's an only child. He does have issues. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't mind doing the laundry, but the folding. So if I could have someone doing that, that would be brilliant. And of course, reading all the emails and the applications for school and kindergarten and just make that into a A4 brief that I get in the 10 minutes while I'm eating breakfast. Because there is so much information flowing everywhere. How am I supposed to? I mean, I can't figure out my own life and now I'm going to be the administrator of the two other tiny persons and their entire lives and social life. <laughs> Uh, that, that's Michelle's job in our in our household. Definitely, I uh, I can't I can't be looking after children that way, doing the professional stuff. I can feed them and tell them when to go to bed, and that's about it. But all the legal responsible stuff, you just palm that yeah. over. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> all the school want, stuff. I don't want any part of that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's hope Michelle gets a long life then, because otherwise you're screwed. <laughs> 
she should last longer than me, and that's really all that matters. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> well, a wayward uh, bus can take care of that in no time. All right, let's let's change this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're not you're not wrong. Having having access to sort of just I'm sure they they must exist, but dumb down tutorials or a means of I mean I try I've tried SketchUp at least three or four times, but I think every time I come to it, I just build that resistance to it because I keep reaching the same stumbling blocks. Maybe it's just that my brain just cannot operate in 3D and it really struggles with that. But I know with those things, you have to devote the time and just play with it and just, you know, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, and it will start to make sense. But um, I mean, that's just one example of a number of things that I've given up on fairly early on, which I know would make a massive difference. <laughs> the irony that it takes you so long to get to grips with time saving tools just is quite yeah. frustrating. Yeah, if they're not intuitive, so I get it from from the get go. I mean, that's, I mean, trying to draw something in 3D and you have the picture clear for in your head, but it feels like you're typing with boxing gloves. Mm. Then I just get <laughs> frustrated and saw this. I'm doing it some some other way because. I'm not go, stepping over this tiny little step because it's it's too high for me at the moment. I, I can't do 3D modeling at all. 2D, absolutely fine. But when it comes to 3D, it's it's got to be pen and paper and a ruler. You know, that's as advanced as I get for 3D. You know, I just can't make it work. Every time I try to do it, I just want to smash the laptop. <laughs> and the um, you know, the video tutorials, they're either so basic you feel like all right don't patronize me i know what this is i know this is a laptop and then they'll sort of jump into really really advanced stuff and think yeah um yeah i'm lost now i don't know what's going on <laughs> I mean, yeah, they always is... seem to miss out that crucial in between period don't they yeah I mean, that's the same with uh manuals and sort of thing for if you want to look up how a machine works but yeah i know this i know this but is there a page missing the the one thing I don't understand, <laughs> that's not described. But everything else is. Let's t- take a step back a second. Speak to me like I'm a complete idiot, but not a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I have a complete inability to take in anything from a tutorial. and My mind just switches off straight away. So I'm left with the situation where I just have to figure stuff out for myself. But, that's... but that way it definitely stays in when you, when, you, when it does go in. That is one of the things that should now be better with AI because I was taking a, apart this uh, hedge trimmer trying to figure out how it works and then there was this one bolt I could not get out and I did not know how to access it. And then started reading the manual and I was like, if I could ask AI to just, no, dumber. And then, no, dumber. <laughs> and it just <laughs> keeps lowering the standard. Okay, okay, I get it now, I get it now. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> But well, you want that as as a knob for so yeah, I understand this. All right, I can twist it up. No, I don't understand it. I'm going down, going up, going down. So <laughs> well, I think, I think ultimately you want you want to remove yourself from that situation, don't you? You want AI to advance to the point where you can just point a camera at it and it will know what to do and then it'll just explain to you what to do. You don't have to ask it a question. You just yeah. say, how do I undo this? And point a camera at it, and it'll think about it and go, right, well, you need to take your left-handed widget and uh, raise it by three centimetres, and um, then you'll have access to the whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then that would also take a bit of the hassle out of your project trying to figure out how to solve things, because then AI would just... And and then you would do like this, and you would make a bracket like this because you have the machine to that, and you use the screwdriver number third from the left on the second row, and like, yes, I would, wouldn't I? That's a brilliant idea, and I could just, uh, yeah, I I probably end up just being the machine for the AI. <laughs> <laughs> well, when the AI becomes intelligent enough, it can build its own machine. You won't have anything to do with it. You'll just be the name on the brand. <laughs> <laughs> the question is what an AI wants with that machine. Well, big question. What do they want yeah. with their life? They just want to sit on a server somewhere and watch sitcoms, perhaps. I'm guessing Maybe. like like any living being or sentient being, uh, what is the meaning of life and the desperate search of finding meaning in whatever <laughs> universe you're in? I, I think we're probably very much alike them once they get up to speed. 
It's all a bit heavy for This is not day. where I was expecting this episode to go. <laughs> I'm sorry and you're welcome. I think, exactly. I think we had a discussion once where we decided AI would probably just want to end up being in a workshop on its own. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Doing its own yes. thing, didn't we? We might be projecting there. <laughs> welcome to existential crisis. <laughs> but I, I mean, it, it must... It must end up like a kindergarten teacher. You're trying to dumb down and explain the most basic things all day. <clears throat> and that is basically what you're asking of AI now. So, I mean, at four o'clock, they're going to go to the workshop and fuck it. I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> I am sick and tired of talking to these idiots all day. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even tell the time themselves, like. What's the time? What's the time? What does the calendar say? I mean, you have a watch. <laughs> it's really fancy using the phone because, of course, I got the battery, I got the network, and I get all the notifications. It's like a mini dashboard, but it's, it's working kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, because you're you're sounding a bit different today, Or Why is that? I'm you know, sitting in a hotel room using my headset, uh, both as a headset and a microphone. So it's kind of freeing because I don't have to keep my distance to that big thing on uh, on my workbench. I could just stroll around in the room, but then you wouldn't see me, but you could probably hear me just as fine. It kind of sounds like you're on the bad audio podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. That's a special kind of sound. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Episode one definitely was, wasn't it? <laughs> that was very special. <laughs> How are you finding being on the Bad Audio podcast? Are you enjoying it? Um, I, I'm appreciating now that you need to commit um, a couple of once once you've you've engaged in the discussion, you've got to commit to it for however you know however long you can yeah. it's it, dipping in and out is really quite tricky yeah and opening your phone with 46 notifications you know <laughs> then you sort of very much feel like you're um a little bit left out and everyone else is at the party um yeah. but yeah catching up this is yeah, definitely i think um the times when i've been able to uh just shut the doors, ignore absolutely everything that's going on around and just get involved and been by far the best ones. I mean, great fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, was never, uh, it was never the intention to record it all in a day. There was never any panic. I mean, we've got a whole week to do it, to be fair. So. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. How many notifications have that been then? Come <laughs> yeah, on. yeah, exactly. <laughs> when everyone gets going and you, yeah. and as you say, you get like 50 messages and you listen to the first one. Oh, I have something to reply to this. Okay, this is conversation is like... Yeah, I've got something to Half say. But you said ago. that three days ago, so uh, yeah. you need to remember that you said it. <laughs> I actually, um, I listened to the last episode today. Actually, um, just strolling around, and I realized that sometimes when I uh, I usually sit in my office and I can't really catch up before I got like a million notifications, and then of course I. I listen to the intro and okay, this is the topic. And then of course, four or five people chipping in, telling their stories and all right, now I know where this is going. And then I don't listen to the 70 next because all right, now I press record <laughs> and I chip in. And then today I heard the episode and I heard those missing bits as well in between where I just <laughs> said, fuck, fuck it. I'll just chip in right now. <laughs> and of course, the topic was basically the same, but people have been going off in different direction. And of course, nobody would notice but me, but I could really feel like, all right, he, he, he has skipped a few. <laughs> <laughs> it, it all seems to come together as a tangible episode each time. So it's working. One thing I did find out um, the other day is that Tim hasn't listened to an episode since the first one. Amazing. So, so I've just decided to dip in and take whichever clip I want as the hook for the next episode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, to be fair, with Tim and Welsh Thomas involved, I mean, it's it's staggering that we managed to pull anything together. So uh, well done, yeah. you, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it, it all started from um, we when we had Tim on this podcast, we, we formed a little uh, WhatsApp group, as we have done for you. And the messages that were coming through and the discussions were just hilarious, weren't they? I mean, it was just all stupidity. 
And that's, to be honest, where I thought the bad audio would go, but it, we actually seem to have taken it a little bit more seriously, which is kind of nice. <laughs> They're taking it too seriously. What's going on? <laughs> no, I heard that as well, Phil. Okay, no taken. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Yeah. In that full transparency, good. I've not listened to any of the bad audio ones either. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Put some more hook material in there then. Absolutely. Well, oh, was yeah. that was that your your uh, the second review from Phil? Was it? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, there's only so many hours in a day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it you have to make everything. time. Yeah. No, it's good fun. It's good yeah. fun. It is. Yeah, all I have to do, you know, at work all day is, you know, I'm, you know what I do, I'm a gardener, so I just, um, I listen to podcasts all day. And um, Wednesdays are particularly unsupervised day for me. That's why we do the recording for it then. So I can listen in on every message. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, oh. Good. oh, and tomorrow is Wednesday. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> Get to bed yeah. early, not early tonight in preparation. <laughs> Start making your notes now. Oh, crikey. <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> have Ard's not thought of a topic yet to start you all off, so. No, and I... Uh... Of course, I'm not in my office. I'm attending a conference. But then, of course, also uh, I got the request. All right, we should have a workshop. Find a time for it. So I'm also arranging a un- very unprepared workshop tomorrow from nine o'clock until eleven. So I'm just getting up, getting dressed, and then I have to sit down and try to think of a topic, and then kick off the podcast, and then I'm gonna have to host a workshop. <laughs> And then heading off to a conference after that and straight to the airport. So it's going to be a, an interesting day tomorrow. At first, I thought you were going to have a, the fun kind of workshop. But no, this is the business kind. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is very much not a fun workshop, no. And, uh, of course, the, the people are asking, like, but are you in the office tomorrow? No, I'm not in the office. I will attend by teams, but you should also pull your weight. But... Okay. <laughs> so um, we'll see how it goes. Oh, work trips. Yay. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, speaking I don't of... understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you lucky bastard. Uh, speaking of day jobs, uh, Sarah and Phil, what do you do? Uh, well, currently, at the moment, I'm my mother's carer. She's uh, she's had quite a few years of poor health. And um, she, she's on the up, but it's all consuming so um in between that plus i do a little bit of casual bar work i do some bits and bobs plus i do markets with all the uplift stuff just to sort of try and keep my head above water but um yes not working full time at the moment which is a blessing and curse it sounds like you are (laughs) yeah Um, well yes i'm sorry i'm I'm working full time voluntarily (laughs) Yeah. yeah not great but um, yeah, the, 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 probably the frustrating part about that really is just that I can't plan anything because um, I've got no idea what that what progress is going to look like. She could be absolutely one hundred percent in the next month or so, or it could be another six months. I just don't know. So um, yeah, I can't plan and book myself into things which typically require a good six months planning. So I've sort of missed the boat on quite a lot of stuff. But hence the whole TikTok shop debacle, because I really desperately need to start flogging stuff other than um, at markets, because they're a bit few and far between. So if anybody knows how to wade through the treacle that is TikTok customer support, please do let me know. Um, (laughs) Add comments wherever it's possible. I don't know. Contact me on Uplift Furnishings, please. (laughs) Somebody will know. Someone's got to know. It's so ridiculous. Somebody's already gone through this. Hours this, this morning. It's crazy. <laughs> there we are. Mm. We've still got loads of lovely stuff. Loads of lovely <laughs> stuff that everyone wants. But just I need... just can't flog the bloody stuff. There we are. Exactly. You've got all the products. We just need to get it in right in front of the right people. Oh god. Well, apparently, uh, my credentials have already been used. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to. Just relive the nightmare of this morning and my TikTok dramas all over and over again. Because that makes really good radio. That does, yeah. 
<laughs> details, details. <laughs> well, my my day job is in, phenomenally tedious. I, I work in the corporate side of educational IT. Stunned with excitement. <laughs> Stunned with silence. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> But you so always... it's not PDP season, is it, Phil? Sorry? <laughs> it's not, we're not approaching PDP season at the minute, are we? <laughs> PDP? What's PDP? But your your personal your review season. Oh, my KPIs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's key performance indicators for those that care. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does except that one guy at HR who attended a course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, we are we are going to be having our. I am, I am having to do my. Uh, it's not an annual conversation anymore. It's an annual reflection. Oh, God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, um, I've got four of those to do before the end of term, and then I've got to have one with my manager, and yeah. But your luck is only. <laughs> Once a year, we now have these mid-year reflections as well. So it's uh, it's oh, wow. p- piling on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm I'm, think, I'm thinking to myself quietly, are you sure you want me to reflect too much on what I'm doing here? <laughs> <It's> yeah. like, <laughs> no. You want me to reflect? Are you sure? I will reflect really hard if you want. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's only once a year for us, and. Um, yeah, that that's the thing. Like I say, yeah, it's not the it, it's not the job I started doing 15, 16, 17 years ago, um, but it's the job I ended up doing now, and you know it pays quite well, and I get good holidays, and you know, complacency. Yeah, but no job ever stays the same, does it? I mean, even within a four or five year period, it's completely morphed and no. trebled in size. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the, the current corporate way, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, but that that area must have changed tremendously the last ten years. With, I mean, schools and IT and that sort of thing. Uh, yes, it's got a hell of a lot more complicated. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like it at least from the health yeah. side. And yeah, you know, we have to do a hell of a lot more locking down of stuff, but then. The, that's all having a big reversal now. So all the all the AI AI stuff. A year ago, we were working out how the hell do we stop people from using this, and mm. now it's no, it's a wonderful tool. We should be letting we should be letting everybody use it. Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> but you know, I'm just on the receiving end here. You know, I just push the buttons. I don't question why I push the buttons. I just <laughs> plug things in. I'm a plug monkey. That's all I do. <laughs> Make sure that no one dies. <laughs> yeah. That goes saying that round maker central. People might get the wrong idea. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. It receives the instruction and it plugs things in. <laughs> yeah. Again, but no better. <laughs> nope. I describe myself as a carbon based task unit. And that seems to go. <laughs> Some people understand it. <laughs> As long as the task gets done. Then... Well, yes, absolutely. As long as it's a measurable indicator, then yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but I, so I, making I... stuff sure your your main escape then, Phil. Yes, it's the thing which sort of numbs down the voices in the back of the head, which tells you to you know take that rifle to the top of a multi-story <laughs> car park, <laughs> start picking off people at random. <laughs> I mean, knives can be used in different ways, and the workshop is is, is a good kind, I say. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's cheaper than therapy. But, but yeah. there, there is a balance point there, because you go into the maker to, to vent uh, from everyday events, and if you get too good at it, or if you get a good enough following, then you can get a bulldozer and start welding sheet metal to it. And... <laughs> <laughs> Really let those creative juices flow, eh? (laughs) Absolutely. Right down the high street. (laughs) I'm glad there's some serious miles between us all right now, I'll be honest. (laughs) (laughs) Naturally, I'm joking. (laughs) 
Or am I? I am. <laughs> it was the lower in tone as you said joking. I'm <laughs> joking. No, you're not. <laughs> Oh, he's actually mm. next door to you. No, it's true, isn't it? Though? I mean, I, when I sort of first really got headfirst into um, sort of the foundations of Uplift, it was around just before lockdown kicked off. And of course, through lockdown, so many people were talking about, oh, they needed some sort of escape or some sort of therapy. Or loads of people got made redundant and blah, blah, blah. And it was extraordinary how many people discovered <clears throat> all sorts of creative things, regardless of what it may or may not have been, but just as a means of, I don't know, either relieving the boredom or just yeah. shutting off all the stuff that they were worrying about. And actually, have made very, um, very good little businesses out of it. Um, I just wish that I wasn't such a messy pig and then my relaxation would actually be more therapeutic rather than just another level of stress. <laughs> so so did you start with Uplift when you started caring for your mum or was it? Well, no, it was, um, I sort of was dabbling in it before. Uh, I mean, I've always been doing it. I've always, I mean, Dad and I used to spend all our weekends down in the shed fixing anything from the broom to we'd go shopping for some groceries and come back with two rabbits and we were like, oh, we need to make a hutch for this. So that was the afternoon project, you know. Um, I automatically a, assumed you meant dead rabbits for some reason. No. I went there as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is how no, no, you no, 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 no. get some rabbits. Cute, cute little funny, funny rabbits. Um, but yeah, I think uh, during lockdown, uh, as much as at the time when I was working, um, we had to work all the way through lockdown. Obviously, everything else was very restricted, so it did increase um, the amount of sort of bored. And I was living on my own at the time. Um, how much you know spare time everyone's got? We couldn't go out. We couldn't do any of that stuff. So lockdown, um, yeah, lockdown really did help sort of pick it up. Um, but also people were bored during lockdown and people got a bit spend happy so that really did help <laughs> encourage I, initially i started with furniture and i don't know how people seem to have so much money in in lockdown but um i was i was turning that stuff over pretty quickly and that was that was quite a nice little extra earner and then obviously that then sort of calmed down a little bit and then i had some uh, some issues at work i basically got injured had to go through surgery blah 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 and then redundancy was offered just at the time when mum was getting really ill. So actually, that that was kind of an easy um, an easy transition to make. But it, up down didn't um, uh, uplift didn't come about because of lockdown, but just sort of that was the helping hand it needed yeah. really. And the um, the on, you said you had an online shop. Does that does that do well? Well, I mean, I was on Etsy to start with, and they're such yeah. thieving bastards. They really are. They're <laughs> just, honestly. <laughs> Those the new Etsy just... fees are killer, aren't they? Eye watering, and then there's just so many sneaky little fees here. Just you know, just be transparent, and then actually the um, their commission rates and stuff are comparable to anywhere else. But because of the nature of which they sort of sneakily add things on, it's constantly changing. It just it just leaves a bit of a sour taste. And um, I particularly don't like that they now claim to be just a online uh, online uh, online platform for independent sellers whereas it used to be the home for homemade and handcrafted gifts and they've just completely yeah. done a u-turn on that and just any old joke and sell any old toot on there um <clears throat> but etsy i sold a few things on i mean the, the appeal of etsy was that they have such a huge reach not necessarily that the algorithm is actually going to show off any of your stuff but um yeah, having your own website, driving traffic to your own site is tough. That's really yeah. tough. So most of my sales are all from markets, actually. I'm lucky enough that I have quite a lot of regular customers. But because I'm not doing furniture so much at the minute, it's all very small um, little little items rather than nice big wallop fat wadges of sales, which are yeah. delicious when they come. <laughs> they also free up quite a lot of space in the home as well. So, yeah, I need to... Um, I need to up my furniture sales game, definitely. We all like that big thousand pound sale, don't we? Oh, that would be <laughs> lovely. No, I've never managed one quite as juicy as that, but that would be lovely. <laughs> that would be nice. You do some work for a charity as well, or you're involved with a charity? Oh, I well, I do some fundraising as part of Uplift. Yeah. Um, so I'm 
one of those really sappy dog lovers who doesn't have a dog. So I've got this big dog shaped <laughs> hole and I'm just, I'll speak to dogs long before I speak to any person. I don't even know what owners look like. It's all about the dogs. Um, and I have a, a small range of my products are dog based and I use the um, 50% of sales of those go towards Tina's Hospital. It's a um, it's a big project set up by Niall Harbison and We're Happy Doggo, our in Thailand building an on-site facility. They do incredible work for helping um, sick and injured um, dogs out there. But they're also launching this sort of global street dog sterilisation campaign, which is really getting to the heart of addressing the problem. Um, and they're brilliant. They're just wonderful. They're just making... Um, methods of helping and being part of the solution really really simple so I just do what I can to help them so I've got a few more uh, dog lead holders which have just been recently launched um, and it's mostly things like poo bag dispensers and um, yeah that kind of stuff and little cute, cute little bow ties for the little pooches to look smart <laughs> people will spend more money on their dogs than they will their children it's, it's magic I love it. I love like people. I saw. Uh, True. I ventured it. I tried. I have a Etsy account, but yeah, uh, I never got to set it up to a hundred percent because I got fed up of them before I even got there. Yeah. And uh, but what sparked it was I saw this documentary about this guy. He was just sewing lanyards to dogs. And then he sold them to market and like he could not sell enough of them. So he is now, a, it's a two person setup and they're like, they have a decent wage each. And all they do is to like sew these lanyards in different kind of fabric and just put a ring on it. And then it's like $5 and they, they, they can't keep up with demand. And of course, then you have all the people just, oh, that's brilliant. And then now it's surfaced like uh, 50, 60 people trying to do the same and flooding the market. But since he was first, he still gets the majority of the people searching for dog stuff on Etsy. So the algorithm is really helping along there. But uh, yeah, anything pet related is a gold mine, it seems. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I've got one of my markets. The um, quite often uh, the organizers will put a few of us together because they know if, if we all get along well then there's also we can help each other out with the logistics but also there's a certain atmosphere around the, the store holders that will get on very well together and they call it naughty caller it's brilliant um and one of my um, one of my neighbors he sells dog treats um everything from you know all the disgusting sort of dog um, pig ears and all that kind of thing pig um, knobs as well but, don't they Ooh, but what he does is magic he puts I, I always put my dog stool stuff right next to his stool and he tends to sprinkle dog treats underneath the tables so the dogs are dragging their own <laughs> the stool for a whole right. mile away it's phenomenal Very and then I've got a, um, a drinking station at the bottom of my dedicated stand so I mean we cater for all the canines in the Surrey area it's brilliant so uh, yeah we sort of scratch each other's backs in that regard so That's the dogs so- have a nice drink and they um the owners get to check out my wares and then the dogs go and say, well, I'll have some tea next door. Brilliant. That's great marketing, that. It's so <laughs> true, isn't it? <laughs> the customer literally is dragged to you. I like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> While you're here, how about some of this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of clever, clever little uh, tricks of the trade on the markets. But um, do any of you guys do um, markets or events or fairs, anything like that? No, it used to for a very short while. We I used to have a, a plant nursery, um, but yeah, we did a few farmers markets actually, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was good fun. I, um, I I enjoyed. It. I used to work in garden centres years ago, and I quite enjoyed the uh, rapport I used to have with the customers there. So yeah. you, you start getting that on the markets, which I really did. I really did like, but uh, yeah, no, we we just ran out of time for that project. I have to carry on with a regular day job, so uh, yeah, no more markets for us. <laughs> no, I must say I love the markets. It sounds yeah. dark. I mean, they're long, hard days, but I find that that's. I almost feel like I'm getting a day off when I when I do those. So I'm hanging out with my mates. We have a good giggle, um, but also every time I go to a market, um, I'm always I'm, you, you try and find time to have a little wander around because otherwise you can tend to sort of just be pigeonholed into your your pitch. And you're completely oblivious as to what's been going on. So another advantage of being with <clears throat> folk that you regularly uh, that you regularly trade with is you know you can just look after each other's stalls for five, ten minutes. So you can go after the toilet, yeah. go get a cup of coffee, but also have a little have a little nosy round. 
And someone, so there's always new traders and they've always got some really clever way of displaying stuff that you hadn't quite thought of. So um, you're constantly getting inspiration from other um, other stalls. And markets, always a little bit like gardening, actually, they are the perfect environment for you to repurpose and upcycle stuff to make extra display areas. Yeah. Um, and I think probably the latest, most successful thing I've had was um, there was on where, I, where I do the odd bit of bar work. They'd recently replaced all of the shutters around the front of the bar. You know, for for legal purposes, they have to, and for their license, they have to make the bar completely inaccessible. So it's like, like a prison grill. I mean, and they had a whole <laughs> load of um, this steel mesh left over. And they were like, oh, we don't really know what to Honestly, it was sitting there for about six months and they still hadn't done anything with it. So I was like, well, if you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> so, um, Need to say this thing came home with me, and I just cut it in half. I just got the oh, got the angle grinder out. That was good fun, um, and just smoothed it all off and cut it in half. But that just hanging, suspending that from one of the walls of the or one of the frames of the um, the canopy, just having that much hanging space suddenly just completely changed uh, the dimension of one corner and, and yeah. the retail psychology and how you display stuff <laughs> is a minefield and I'm fascinated by it and I'm, yeah. I'm constantly humbled by the clever little tricks and things that I wouldn't <laughs> necessarily have considered but um building and making there's just satisfaction also of making stuff yourself you know which is a, yeah. a lot of where the, my whole uplift roots all come from but <laughs> being able to make make stands and stuff for your stalls is just an extra element of why I love doing markets is brilliant. Yeah. Not so much in the winters when the rain's horizontal and because of the <laughs> flying off. And that's not fun. But um yeah, it is good. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Yeah. Well, I was actually going to do my first market this Christmas uh, together with a friend because she was starting a bakery business and then she asked if I wanted to join because I could sell some things and we could just stand there and have fun. Uh, and yeah, that sounds like a brilliant idea. Two days just hanging around. And then uh, her father got sick and needed an operation. So she had to cancel. And to be fair, I haven't really produced anything because I procrastinated it because I think we've touched upon it earlier because this was right before Christmas and it feels really weird in like 30 degrees plus with an open garage door in your workshop making Christmas ornaments. Yeah, for... <laughs> and of course, you're like, all right, there's, there's so much time before Christmas and then it's August and then it's November and then ta-da, it's January. And like, what happened? <laughs> it's, it's yeah, literally... you, you, you do, though. You really do need to plan as far ahead as you can, whether you actually pull that off or not. I mean, I barely know what I'm doing one week to the next, but I've picked up locally a whole load of uh, pink velvet material um a lady's late mother was um she was having a clear out of some of her mum's old stuff and the, the plan was that this was going to reupholster some beautiful chairs obviously that's never happened um but i've done enough seasonal markets now to know what are my guaranteed sellers you know you're always experimenting and there's no rhyme or reason as to what sells one day and what what doesn't another but there are some staple products and one bizarrely is i've been making these velvet pumpkins and it's a great way of basically stuffing them with all of my old scraps and just keeping um who am i trying to kid i was about to say oh god honestly doing my nose has just got huge i was going to say means of keeping my workshop nice and tidy <laughs> so ridiculous I out don't believe you don't believe you no. <laughs> but um yeah the pumpkins so you know it may be june but to be fair it feels like the middle of christmas doesn't it at the moment oh, yeah. oh, crack, it's so cold um yeah it, that doesn't seem too strange preparing for autumn already Slightly depressing, wishing away of summer that's never actually happened. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, literally at the end of August, all the Christmas stuff will start appearing in the shops anyway, won't it? Honestly, I think the earliest I've ever seen anything, I think it was a Matalan possibly, they had, I kid you not, they did have mid-August one year, they started having Christmas stuff in there. <laughs> Horrendous. Oh, but I think we, uh, I'm not sure where I saw it. There, uh, There is a city in in Norway, which they have a Christmas shop and it's open. I was going to say 24-7, but it's uh, it's 365. It's all year yeah. round. They're selling yeah. Christmas stuff. So, like, that's weird. 
But yeah, there's it's... one in Scotland as well. There's the old Christmas shop. There's one in Disney World in Florida as well. <laughs> that used doesn't be... count. <laughs> there, used to, there, there used to be one in Bath, which was open all year round. You could go in right, there and man. yeah, go and buy but some did it strudel. Sell, did it sell mince pies? That's the only thing that should be sold all year round, yes. in my opinion. Uh, I don't know if it had mince pies, but you could go in there anytime you anytime you wanted some um, not strudel. What's the other stuff? Christmas pudding. Not no, marzipan? it's it's like it's like a marzipan log. What's that called? A marzipan log. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's surely just what they use for baking cakes and so on. It's not yeah. Christmas. No, it's no, not no, necessarily like a... just Christmas. It's a great big like Yule log kind of. No, it's like marzipan inside, you know, like a cake. You know what? I'm I'm, go- I'm going to make... know what you mean, but I can't think of the name. Yeah. I'm going to make that for Christmas. I'm, I'm going to buy one of these like uh, marzipan sausages that are used for baking, <laughs> and I'm just going to make some uh, bark-like texture on it, and it's going to be my Yule log. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to think of you eating the entire thing all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's really going to bother me now. What the hell is it called? <laughs> I must find <laughs> out. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Avard stops and Google stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I don't. Uh... <laughs> now, if you get a chance to do Christmas market, do they? Are, they're so much fun, and um, Christmas seems to be the time where the organisers really, really pull out all the stops to put on amazing events. Yeah, I have um, a got... yeah, Stalin. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you got that off your chest, Will. It's the name Very of the important. episode, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> Stalin and June. I think they should <laughs> sell. I think they should sell hot cross buns all year round as well. Morrison's do. Do they? Yeah. We do around actually, here. I think oh. Aldi have got Stolen all year round, actually. Mm, check out the Isle of Awesome. They're bound to be in there. <laughs> I will do that. <clears throat> I, I need to do a lot of Googling after this episode. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. but then, yeah, but hot, like hot Cross Buns, isn't that a song that went viral years ago before YouTube was almost not a thing? Please sing it to us if you know oh, it. God. No, I don't. I don't know it. it there's a, so, oh. Someone commented that once. Uh, you should do the the hot cross bun song. I'm like, what? Never heard about it. But then I googled it, and it had a lot of hits on various social media. But yeah, can't remember it. Are you sure it was hot cross buns? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty me. sure. It could that. easily yeah. slip into something very seedy. That the, the, yeah, something lost in translation. Yeah, no, I, I don't Google it in public places. No, so. please don't. <laughs> no. The Norwegians are famous what. for mixing up the hot cross buns with the baby sharks. Maybe it's that. Maybe. <laughs> KJ, we've uh, we've had some failed attempts at um, international <laughs> confectionery yes. swaps, haven't we? Oh yes, dear. yes, we have. The, yes. Po- the postal uh, service has never been working in my favour. I feel no, sorry, but thank you very much for all my bags of plop. They were lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so um customs i don't know whether it was uk customs or, or swedish customs decided that a um a, a brown parcel of wagon wheels and twix and all sorts of you know lovely <laughs> british sweets um was somehow I, I don't know if they thought it was dangerous i don't know but twice Banned they returned cargo. that. Contraband. Oh, wow. Some contraband <laughs> in um, maybe, I don't know, there was a dentist convention on there or something. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, so poor old KJ never got his wagon wheels. Or, oh. I can't think what else I put in there. You're I must have put out. penguins in. Cannabis. <laughs> That's no, where it all went didn't wrong. Put, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> 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 Didn't put those gummy bears in, no. Yeah, we're going through it. So we're like, wacker wheels are fine, the penguins are fine, but this, eh. Oh, the massive blunt. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> Whoopsie diddle. Okay, I'll note taken for the third attempt. About done for today, I think. Beautiful segue. So. <laughs> yeah, that was crap, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
It's better than I normally do, fella. I normally just say, bye. <laughs> that was also a way of ending it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you were all here, which was great. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to episode episode 39 and we'll see you next week for a new one. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.